What's going on everyone, it's Justin here and today we're checking out the HP Dragonfly Pro featuring the AMD 7 series of processors and the reason why it's a little bit different from the other computers that I've checked out on the market is because it is really geared towards productivity specifically in the efficiency and battery life sector because for a computer of this form factor with the specs and the amount of power I feel like the optimizations are really geared towards somebody who wants that maximum battery life in a lightweight computer but in terms of the power perspective and especially with the comparables such as Intel Evo and the Apple Silicon it really does make a compelling case in many areas all at a price point of just around a thousand dollars so I think from a value standpoint there's also a lot to look at there and I also want to give a huge thanks to HP for sponsoring this video so for starters when you take a look at the computer itself and its form factor it is really the sweet spot in terms of size it features a 14 inch panel with a 16 to 10 aspect ratio which I feel like is the most productive ratio and nowadays I feel like the 14 inch size in the 13 inch body with the smaller bezels of the computers is really one that is what I've stuck to over the past few years. On top of that, you'll notice that it has like this matte black finish that goes all the way around it. And even though black is my favorite color and what I've gone with with pretty much everything that I've bought in the past couple years, despite it being a little bit boring, I love the stealth look, the silver logo on the back. But one small touch you're gonna notice in the detail is that it actually has like micro speckles on the finish itself, which might look like dust at first, but it's actually supposed to make the computer look a little bit cleaner because a simple like matte black sheet just catches like oil marks and stains. And that's not to say that you're not gonna get any markings on a computer like this, but it definitely helps significantly compared to some of the other matte black computers that I've checked out recently. From the side, you can see the computer itself is relatively slim. I find that the display hinge is quite solid and although it isn't the lightest computer on the market, it is very well balanced. It feels well built, it doesn't feel like it's flimsy or it's going to bend in any way, but you take a look at the side, the way it tapers off here with the two ports over here as well as the other one on the other side, it has remained relatively simple. The IO lineup is not exactly vast by any means, but it just like has exactly what you need when it comes to 2023 technology. It features two USB Type-C ports as well as a super fast USB 4, and that is used for both charging and data transfer. And over on the side here, you also see the small Bang & Olufsen branding. The overall placement of the keyboard is also really nice. I think the tactile keys are definitely something that I noticed and a little bit more tactile than some of the recent Windows computers that I've checked out. And on top of that, it has a large trackpad in the middle that is once again, very good. Something a little bit different about this keyboard though is that you actually have four different custom smart command switches over on the right side. This allows you to access an app with the press of the button, program it, but there is also a support button if you want to use the HP Concierge, which there's different tiers and different levels that you can pay for depending on what you need specifically, but you can go ahead and press it and have the help within just a few seconds. And I think this is especially good if you're buying a computer for your grandparents, for example, having that tech support just at the press of a button for whatever they need is super handy so they don't have to bother you. On top of that, you're also gonna find a fingerprint button as well as the webcam kill switch. And on each side, you have the speaker vents. For multimedia, I think this is also a really good computer because we're gonna get to the battery life in a bit, which I think is the big selling point. This speaker sounds really good. It is a partnership with Bang & Olufsen that HP has had for many years now. And considering its size, it really does give a good level of stereo separation. And overall, I think the integrated speakers definitely deliver a pretty good level of sound quality compared to other options that I've tried. When it comes to the display, it is a 14 inch 16 by 10 aspect ratio with a resolution of 1920 by 1200. This is gonna be good for general productivity, and although sometimes I do prefer having a higher resolution to have many different windows open, the battery life is definitely something that benefits from a full HD resolution compared to Quad HD or Quad HD Plus, or even a 4K resolution. And so I feel like for a lot of people, that is gonna be more than enough. It is an IPS display that I think looks pretty decent. And on top of that, you can also utilize the touchscreen aspect for input. So that is always very handy. So when it comes to like the pattern of this computer, it really is 
geared towards productivity, as you can tell from the very simple and muted design with the good harbor elements that are well balanced out without overcomplicating anything. But if you're someone who needs like a ton of different IO ports, a higher resolution, or do like creative work specifically, I would say that this computer isn't specifically one that is geared towards you and more so one that is for simple productivity with excellent battery life, the latest and greatest technologies in categories that matter, including Wi-Fi 6 as well to ensure the maximum connectivity and speed. But moving on to the performance category itself, as I mentioned, this is actually my first time in quite a while reviewing an AMD Ryzen computer. And I've always been very interested in it. I've seen a lot of comments about how the AMD lineup has been extremely solid over the past few years when it comes to processing power in both laptops and desktops. And this specifically has the AMD Ryzen 7736U mobile processor with AMD Radeon integrated graphics, and you can customize it up to 32 gigabytes of LPDDR5 RAM, a terabyte of PCIe NVMe SSD, which is super fast. And the NVMe drive in a lot of scenarios is what is able to contribute to great performance as well. Obviously apps opening very quickly, being able to transfer files and all that between your drives and the fast ports. The actual performance itself of this computer was really solid. I feel like a lot of people who are buying this computer are going to be doing more simple tasks such as web browsing and also like Word documents, Excel, maybe like web-based documents as well. Um, I know a lot of the stuff nowadays is actually built into the cloud and a lot of things that we use as a team are very cloud focused. So in our office, a lot of people just have like basic productivity machines, whereas the video editors have the larger and bulkier computers for video editing on the go. It also really doesn't make that much noise. That is definitely an observation that I had. The computer doesn't really get that hot whatsoever. I mean, in general, I was able to do that as well as a bit of Lightroom, for example, for editing photos, and I really didn't run into any problems. And I think what is most impressive here is the battery life. I've heard a lot of things about the Dragonfly Pro having amazing battery life and with the AMD Ryzen and also the fact that the computer is thin but not like razor thin is that the battery life is incredible. You can get up to 16 hours of playback on this computer in optimal conditions, but in terms of real world usage, I was able to get through two entire days without needing a single charge on this laptop. And if you need to charge it, you can get 50% of charge in just 30 minutes, which is impressive. And of course, it also comes with a 96 watt charger to be able to reach that fast capability. But the battery life being able to last two entire days with the performance that it's able to offer is just very impressive. And I think that's probably the biggest selling point here when it comes to the ultimate productivity machine. It's a computer that is able to handle all the tasks that you need without overheating, not getting too loud with the fans kicking in, but also delivering battery life that is just absolutely incredible and amongst the best that I've seen on any Windows computer to date. In terms of some of the things that I don't like, personally, I usually like at least a QHD display, a slightly higher resolution to be able to have more things on the screen because I like to have a lot of different tabs and windows open as well as some photo editing. I am very much a multitasker, but I know a lot of people like to just have one focus task. So specifically, that is just to my own workflow. And I'm also not a big fan of the buttons over on the right side of the keyboard. And it's not because they aren't useful, it's just something that I personally won't use that much. I don't need to use the My HP. I don't really need to use the actual like support function either because obviously I live in the tech space. And in terms of customizing the webcam settings and the appearance, I typically have the camera off for meetings, so it is very specific to myself, but I do also feel like a lot of people may not want it to take up the space on the keyboard. When it comes to the actual like processor options though, the AMD Ryzen is something that has really impressed me and I'm not really surprised. I've heard plenty of good things about the experience with the AMD Ryzen processors and the battery life is something that I didn't really believe at first, but after trying it, I can tell you that the battery life definitely does live up to the claims when it comes to optimal conditions, but more specifically in real world, it was still impressive. Even though I really like a thin computer, this I think is a really good balance of giving you the benefits of just having a little bit more space internally without making any major sacrifices. And I think that's what it comes down to. In 2023, there are so many good computer options for productivity, for performance, and most importantly, these are made for on the go usage. And each company has their own approach between different models and lineups of where to allocate different resources to give you the best overall performance possible. And this is a computer that may not be for everyone, but if you're productivity focused, 
then it is a very good recommendation. So if you guys wanna go ahead and check it out for yourself, I'm gonna drop a link down below. And a huge thanks for watching this video and I hope you guys enjoyed it and I'll see you all in the next one.